Good evening again and thank you for joining me for our last night of Night Blessing together as we reflect on the final day of Spring Harvest at home. It's been a remarkable day as we have explored what it means to be unleashed participants in God's great purposes and plans for the world and all that that might mean for us. I trust that you have been incredibly blessed by Spring Harvest at home. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has joined in this great adventure of making it work. They've done a remarkable job. And under the circumstances, I think we have learned so much about how we work together, share together. And actually, that is for me the lesson that I want to leave you with. We are in this together. As we've reflected on Acts chapter 12 and the power of the church in Jerusalem, both persecuted and prospering at the same time, I'm reminded that our circumstances do not dictate what it is that God might be doing in our hearts and in our lives. So often we can think that um, what's going on around us will determine whether or not we can be faithful, whether we can flourish and whether the power of the Spirit can be at work in us. But that's just not true. The Apostle Paul shows us so many times in his letters to the Corinthians and others that his circumstances were secondary to his standing and that when he realised that he was one of God's people called to God's purposes, equipped with God's power and enabled by God's presence, then he was able to be a source of life and hope and grace in the world. When he wrote to the church in Philippi, he was in jail and he was facing real uncertainty. In fact, in Philippians chapter 1, it's very clear that he doesn't know whether he's going to live or die and he's in prison. And yet, even in that set of circumstances, he has great faith that he can trust God and that he is a participant in a kingdom that cannot be shaken and in a gospel that cannot be broken. He says this as he writes to the Philippians in Philippians 1.12. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel. What if everything that goes on in the world can be an opportunity for the gospel to be shared, for the grace, the mercy and the love of God to be shown? What if in the middle of this terrible pandemic the church could rise and have its finest hour what if you and I could shine with the light and the grace of God what if we discovered and remembered that we were participants in God's great kingdom and that this kingdom could not be broken what an amazing thing that would be as we in our homes all across the United Kingdom and around the world have enjoyed spring harvest at home this year this unique event brought to you in very stringent and difficult circumstances what might God want us to do with it? How do we participate in the extension of his kingdom and the advancement of his name? Could we look with God's lens at the world? Could we see our circumstances through a different um, microscope, through a different magnifying glass? The magnifying glass of grace, the magnifying glass of God's presence, of God's possibility. Could we have childlike faith to believe that God might do something in us and with us and through us? That this moment in time could be one of the church's finest hours. That we could rise to proclaim the gospel, to demonstrate it, to live it, to share it, to show it and to let people see the hope and the mercy of Almighty God. That's my prayer as we come to the end of Spring Harvest at Home. I have thoroughly enjoyed unpacking the book of Acts with you in the Bible studies. I've been grateful for every participant. I'm grateful for the seminar I did on grief. I'm grateful for all of the people that have facilitated, participated and enabled this event. But now it's down, sisters and brothers, to you and me. How we leave Spring Harvest, what we do as we go from Spring Harvest at home into our daily lives is vital. We have an opportunity to be released from old thinking, to be released from old ways of doing things, to break a chain and to step into freedom that perhaps we haven't known before. This is a remarkable moment of opportunity for the church as we explore what it is to be participants in the kingdom of God, a kingdom that is coming, a kingdom that has come, a kingdom that is secure and established. We know the end of this story. God wins. And as you go to sleep tonight, as this final day of Spring Harvest at Home comes to an end, I pray that you and I will catch a vision of what it means to have unleashed power, to be unleashed people, to move and carry the presence of God, to live in the potential of all that God has for us and to be participants in a kingdom that can never be broken and never destroyed. Thank you so much for joining with me. Share the night blessings. Here's the last one as we reflect together. May you remember 
that you may be refined by your circumstances, but you do not need to be defined by them. Whatever you are facing, may you remember that you are part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. May you play your part in the great story of hope wherever God has placed you. And may you live a life liberated by love for the glory of God. What a remarkable week it has been. What a powerful time of encounter every day. I pray these night blessings have blessed, encouraged and strengthened you. And as you go into your daily life and into all that lies ahead, confined, liberated, isolated together, um, shielded or released, whatever is going on in the United Kingdom with all of the terrible news around us, remember we have a gospel to proclaim, a king to serve and a kingdom that we are part of that cannot be shaken. May the Spirit of God fill you and the grace of God lead you into territory where hope is possible and love is manifested. Good night, God bless you and thank you for joining Spring Harvest at Home this year. Keep you